power. When Barack Obama took office as president in January of 2009, the economy obviously was an absolute free fall. It was uh, the Wall Street collapse and the overall financial collapse that occurred at the end of the George W. Bush presidency. Just free fall. I mean, Great Depression time, yawning abyss. And so shortly after being sworn in as president, the new president and the Democrats in Congress pushed through something that used to be a non-controversial way of dealing with big economic downturns. When George W. Bush had had an economic downturn to deal with in 2008, uh, he passed a stimulus. When, when Ronald Reagan had an economic downturn to deal with in 1981, he passed a stimulus. When this new Democratic administration took over in the middle of a huge economic downturn in 2009, they did the same thing. They passed a stimulus. E even though a stimulus had been a non-controversial bipartisan tool of economic policy in the past, in 2009, with the new President Barack Obama in office, Republicans decided they were going to be against anything this new president put forward, even if it was the kind of thing that they had supported in the past under presidents of both parties. And so they decided they were against the stimulus. Every single Republican in the House of Representatives voted no on the stimulus. But they, but they didn't just vote against it. They also made a big public case that the stimulus bill was bad for the country, that it would do harm to the country, that it wasn't just a uh, uh, pointless uh, or even worse than pointless to spend money in this way to try to help the economy. It wasn't just a bad idea. It was an immediate evil that was going to make the country worse off than it already was. The president, in tandem with Democrats in Congress, have pushed through a $787 billion bill full of pork barrel spending, government waste, and massive borrowing, cleverly called stimulus. Government waste, cleverly called stimulus. Republican Congressman Eric Cantor of Virginia there. And that was a, a typical example of the kind of things they were saying. And wh whether or not you agree with Congressman Cantor's argument, it is an intellectually cogent stance, if you think about it, right? I'm voting no on this thing. I think it will be harmful. If this is done, it not only won't help anything, it will hurt the economy. So I'm voting no. It has an internal logic, it makes sense. It makes sense unless you are the person making that case in public who is also writing this letter in private to the Secretary of Transportation asking for the terrible, horrible stimulus money to come to your district. Stimulus money that, quote, will provide much needed new jobs and economic growth throughout the region. That's what Eric Cantor wrote to Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood. After bashing the stimulus as pointless waste, Here's Eric Cantor touting the benefits of stimulus money when it made its way to his district. We can create a lot of jobs. Again, the estimates of job creations are 85,000 to 160 some thousand jobs for the Commonwealth. Most of that in this area. Yeah, there, there were a bunch of Republicans who did this. And, and the issue here is not that there was gonna be this money laying around and they didn't want that money to be around at all, but as long as it was there, you, you try to get some for your district. Th that's, that's not the issue here. The issue here is that these guys were making a public case that this money is bad, that it would hurt the economy. But then privately, they were asking to please get some of that money because of how good it would be for the economy. Y you clearly don't believe your own public arguments when you're making private arguments alongside them like that. You're just making a totally craven political case that has nothing to do with what you know to be true. This happened to dozens of Republicans across the country. This was Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Jean Schmidt of Ohio saying in public, quote, I did not believe that it would create the jobs that were promised. I take little pleasure in being correct. But here's Jean Schmidt in private writing to the Labor Department asking for that stimulus money that, quote, will not only save jobs, but create multiple jobs within Southern Ohio. Well, which is it? Here's Republican Congressman Phil Gingrey of Georgia getting all publishers clearinghouse with a giant check for stimulus money that he not only voted against, but that he publicly criticized as a boondoggle and a dismal failure. Look how big the check is. Republican Congressman Mike Castle of Delaware trashed the stimulus. He voted no on the stimulus. And then he went back to Delaware and handed out giant stimulus checks in his district talking about how good it was gonna be for job growth. It was so embarrassing, right? did nothing to stimulate the economy, even though I wrote letters saying, please give me this money, it will help stimulate the economy. And then I signed my name at the bottom of those letters. And if I did request all that stimulus money, which I did, by the way, I did it by mistake, my staff did it. I signed it, yeah, but it was my staff. 
Yes, this is about the effectiveness of government efforts to stimulate the economy. And yes, this is about the low, low tax burden of the truly rich and famous in this country. But at a more basic level, it is also about how comfortable you are with just looking people in the eye and saying something even about yourself that is not true, something checkable about yourself that you know you may get caught on, and just saying it anyway. Joining us now is Ezra Klein, who's a columnist for The Washington Post and MSNBC policy analyst. Ezra, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Good evening. Which Paul Ryan is right? Uh, the private Paul Ryan, who said stimulus money would help his home district, uh, or the public Paul Ryan, who said it was a waste of money at the time, and who now says, looking back, those letters were a mistake. It really was all a waste. It didn't help. Look, I, I have no way of knowing how these letters were handled internally to his office. Constituent services seems plausible to me. I just don't know. It's the second part of his statement there, the one where we say, we know it failed. We know it didn't work. We know it is not true. Uh, we just know that. I mean, number one, just take the practical case. Here's what the stimulus included in it, right? Tax cuts, that was about a third of it. Paul Ryan, if he believes anything in this entire world, believes tax cuts create jobs. He has been very clear on that. Another big part of it was infrastructure, getting people to build roads and bridges. I don't know what the theory of the economy is under which when you hire somebody, when you give them money to build a road or a bridge, it doesn't create a job. But it's not one that anybody I've actually ever met hews to. And then the third part of the stimulus, one of the big other parts, was that you gave money to state and local governments in order to keep teachers and firemen and other public employees on the job. And if you're curious about whether or not that is a real thing, whether or not those jobs are real, over the last two years, we have lost 600,000 of them. They show up in the Bureau of Labor Statistics report every single month. Paul Ryan releases a press release about it every single month. Everyone is aware those jobs have been going away. It is really unclear how you can stand up with a straight face and say not that you don't think the stimulus was the absolute best way to do that, because that's an argument that could be had, but that it just doesn't work, that stimulus itself is a, a failed economic theory. It's, it's ridiculous. Did Republicans used to accept the idea of stimulus? I mentioned, you know, a George W. Bush stimulus, a Ronald Reagan stimulus. There were many others. I just picked those out to make a point. Mm -hmm. But this, it does seem like an economic tool that isn't the least controversial thing in the world, but at least used to have the logic of it accepted in a bipartisan way, right? Including by Paul Ryan. So yeah. in 2001, there's a great debate, there's a great uh, hearing between Paul Ryan and a Romney, uh, an economist named Kevin Hassett, who's currently affiliated with the Romney campaign. And they're out there and they're sort of talking about the Bush tax cuts. And now the Bush tax cuts, you remember, were originally there to pay down a big surplus. We had all this money we needed to do something with it, we'll give it to you in a tax cut. Then the economy began to break down, we were going into a recession, suddenly we didn't have this clear large surplus anymore. So the conversation, the rationale for these tax cuts flipped instantly. It went from, we need to pay down the surplus to, hey, this would be a great way to stimulate the economy too. We need it in order to be recession proof. And Kevin Hassett and Paul Ryan have this exchange in this debate about, you know, the, the, the problem was before, they just didn't do their stimulus fast enough. You needed to do it deeper. And there are some differences between doing a permanent tax cut and doing a temporary tax cut, which are relevant and worth talking about again. But Paul Ryan pretty clearly says there, the problem with past stimulus is, is we needed more. And by the way, the Romney campaign this morning, including by Kevin Asset, had this op-ed in which they said that if you believe these two economists who are fairly important in these discussions, Carmen Reinhart and Ken Rogoff, you should know, the Obama administration should know that in a long recession, in a long recovery like the one we're in, stimulus is ineffective. So I'm back and looked, and how much did Ken Rogoff think we should have in stimulus? stimulus, a trillion dollars over two years. And what did Carmen Reinhart say about stimulus? That she would tattoo it on her forehead, that it had done an enormous amount to help. So even the economists that they rely on and they cite don't say, don't believe the things they claim they believe right now. Ezra Klein, columnist for The Washington Post uh, and an MSNBC policy analyst.